Elementor have released a beta version of 3.30, which is going to build upon what they did with 3.29 with regards to version 4, the whole atomic components, the classes. I'm going to focus mainly on what we're going to get or what we're being drip fed with regards to version 4. We're being told that we're going to have some more better control over the classes and what we apply. There'll be some popovers that will tell us what classes are present on particular elements. We're also told that when you now just type in, say, one REM, it kind of switches the units. I really do like that. It was always a little bit annoying that sometimes you had to click a button. And we are also being told that we will now have a widget for YouTube. So what you need to do is go over to your website, go over to Elementor Tools, make sure you've got beta tester enabled. Please do this on a staging or a test website. Don't start using any version 4 components or anything that you see in any beta version on a live website, all right? Your clients will not be happy. And then you'll notice some messages that say there's a new version of Elementor beta version available for the free and pro. Go and update them. And if this is the first time you're using the version 4 components, then you need to go over to your Elemental settings, go to the tab where it says Editor of V4, and you got to go and activate that. I've had a quick check and there's nothing new in the settings or the features. So let's go and jump into a brand new page. So as promised, we do now have a new widget. Now in the previous video, I went over the heading, the flex box, the image, the paragraph, the SVG where I felt like they still needed to be improved or what we've got so far at the moment is like a phase one. Remember, this V4 is going to evolve over time, okay? This is not the final finished article. It's going to evolve. So at the moment, we are going to learn as we go along with all of these different beta versions. So we go and drop the video in. I'm going to get rid of the URL. And I'm going to paste one in. Now, one thing you will notice, though, that this is a YouTube widget. It's not a video widget where you have the option for like daily motion, YouTube, uh, Vimeo or self-hosted. So at the moment, we're just getting a YouTube specific one. We can specify what our start and end times are. Now I've entered in some values with 5 colon 00, 05 colon 00, 00 colon 05, 00, 00, whatever. And I'm not at the minute getting it to start at the five minute mark. If I go and hit autoplay, it starts at the zero point. And if I go over to my preview, I'm going to die it's still doing it there as well. And just out of curiosity, I went and entered in 0500, but watch what happens when I hit autoplay. When you know what it starts at eight minutes, 20 seconds. So if anyone knows what the format should be, or if I've missed a trick somewhere, please clarify in the comments. But we've got autoplay, mute, loop, lazy load, player controls, captions, privacy mode. People often wonder what is privacy mode. It doesn't hide the branding. It just means that when the video is playing, it's not sending any details back over to YouTube. You know, if anyone's worried about GDPR or cookie consents and things like that, if you have got any videos on your website and you have not got privacy mode enabled, you definitely need to make sure you've got a cookie consent tool on your website because you are feeding back information into the YouTube Google monster. Just like with all the other widgets, we have the style tab, layout, spacing, typography, background, same as what we had before. But we are told in this new beta release that we now have more control over the class names. So let's go and add in video and I hit return. That is now a class and I'm going to ensure that is clicked. Go over to size. Now as part of this class, I'm going to set a width, but I am going to use another feature that's been introduced into version 3.30. We can change these units, literally just hitting a button. So at the minute it is pixel. If I hit R, it goes to REM and I could go and enter in my value. I could hit percentage, it goes to percentage. If you hit V, it goes to VW. If you want to get VH, you can't, it, there's no point hitting V double twice. What you got to do is hit V and then hit the H as soon as you've done it. And of course, if you hit E, it will go over to EM. So I'm going to just leave that as percentage when I get it to work. There we go. And I'm now going to type in 50. So that is 50%. So that is part of the video class system. Now back to what I meant about the enhanced control. Even though we've gone and done that, if you were to right click and inspect this, you did not get that class name coming up. What you got was like this jumbled up jargon of like, um, uh, I think it was mainly numbers. I can't remember if there were letters in there. there. I think there were a few letters, but it was mainly, it was very jumbled up and it made no sense, especially if you wanted to refer to that in some custom CSS. Bear in mind, we still do not have a custom CSS section inside of version four. Go over to my preview page. I'm going to right click and click inspect. And you can see that when I do a search for it, the video class name has been applied. We're not getting up all of that jumbled gobbledygook. Another extra feature that I know people asked for in the previous version was to be informed if we have applied any styling. 
So staying on the video widget and I'm in the style tab, you can see here with the size where I added in 50%, we now have a turquoise circle. If I hover over that, it says it has got a style applied. If I click the circle, it's just going to open up that particular tab. But if I was to click the circle again, it's going to now tell me it is the video class system and it's got 50%. To be honest, I can kind of see that already from there. But if you imagine you've got lots of classes applied, so let's just go over into the mobile view just to test this out. And I'm going to set this to be 300 pixel on the mobile. Let's go back over to the desktop. If I now click that dot, it says 50%. And if I go over to the mobile, I have to click again. And this is where I can now see the difference. So on the desktop, I only ever see the desktop. But if I go onto other breakpoints, then I can now see that it's 300 on the mobile but on the desktop, it was originally set to 50. It would be nice if I actually saw the mobile on the desktop as well, so I can see that there is something added. It's a bit like when you're building a website, and sometimes if you're not using like a clamp formula, you might have popped in like a typography size for your desktop, a different one for your tablet, a different one for the mobile. I would like to be able to go to the desktop one, click it, and then I can see it for all of them, rather than have to go to the tablet or the mobile to see you know, the previous version that's been inherited or what's been set before. So I hope Elemental look into that and make that active. Something else we're also told about with the release is that it will now remember what tabs or what settings you've got open. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to hit the plus button and I'm going to drop in a heading widget below here. I'm just going to add in some extra letters and then I'm going to go back to my video widget and you can see it's gone back to the style tab because that's where I was. I'm going to go back into the heading. I'm going to go to style and I'm now going to open the background and I'm going to go and give it a bit of a yellow color like that. I'm going to go back to my video widget and this time I'm going to close down the size and I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to add in a box shadow, which you can see. If I then click onto my heading, it takes me to the style tab because that's where I last was and it's gone to the background tab open. So it remembers what you were using or where you were. So it's obviously doing some, you know, minor savings or somewhere where it's remembering where you were. That can speed up your the way you're working. Because if you imagine you're working with lots of um, widgets, you know, maybe they've all got different classes on and you're jumping around a bit. You don't want to, every time you click onto a widget, it always goes back to the general tab. You click the video, it goes back to the general tab. Then you got to go over to the style tab. Then you got to open up, say, uh, the box shadow again. So you like click, click, click in a way. Now you just click the widget and it will take you back to where you last were. And I think that's really, really good. So I've just very quickly touched on some of the new things we're getting with version 4. There's a whole heap more, right? You know, we're told about other things as well. Please go and have a look at the link and read up about the cloud kit, accessibility improvements, and you can see all of the changes there. But version 3.30 of Elementor Free and Pro is now out. We still don't have anywhere to enter in our CSS ID or our CSS class name. Yeah, I know we've got the global classes and all of that, but what if I want to, what if I've got another class somewhere else, you see? I, I just feel like I still would like to see that built in, or maybe I'm just over confusing myself with why it's not there. But I definitely would go have a look at version 3.30, make sure it's on a staging site or a testing site, never on a live production website. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.